Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to install Stable Diffusion. Last time I did this I did it with a Docker image with a web GUI and that didn't really need any explanation on how to install it. It was just building the Docker image and running the Docker image. But in this case it's going to be a lot more steps. We're going to run it locally on my Ubuntu system with CUDA 12.3 I believe and, and so on and Python. 11.3 uh, as well, I think. To start it off, we're gonna switch over to my screen here. And I'm in my GitHub directory here where I have all my GitHub uh, repositories. So I will clone down the stable diffusion repository to my disk and jump into that directory. I will create a Python environment called work so I can work in that Python environment. And I will switch over to that Python environment. I also need Miniconda. So I'm gonna create a directory in my home directory called Miniconda3. I'm gonna get a particular script that installs Miniconda to that directory. It is a compiled script, so you really need to trust Anaconda, the website there, or else don't do this. <laughs> um, so I run that script and it will install the payload into that directory. And then I will remove that script afterwards because I don't need it. I just need Anaconda or Miniconda. I will initialize this Miniconda into bash. So it actually is in my bash RC and I can close this uh, shell and open it up again. And it says base over here, which means that it's installed and enabled. So now I want to jump into my stable diffusion directory again. I want to activate my Python. Um, workspace and I also want to create a conda workspace uh, that I can install all the conda packages to so I can la later on clean that up and remove it and I also activate that so now I have work work over here which means that it's installed and enabled so next up I'm gonna install PyTorch and PyVision uh, using conda install, pytorch, type torch vision, cpythos and y for just do it, don't ask any questions. And we see here which channels are installed and so on. This will take a little while, so I get back to you when it's done. Next up we have the transformers, diffusers and invisible watermark. And we'll install that with pip. And the transformers here had a version uh, information on it, but I removed that because I'm using CUDA 12.3, which means that it will not work. I think it's this package that they explained for was for CUDA 11.2. So if you have a CUDA version that is older, that will work for you. I'm running the latest Ubuntu version and I'm also not running stable Ubuntu so I get the latest CUDA drivers, the latest NVIDIA drivers and so on um, which is beneficial for me but it also means that some of these projects are built for older versions so keep that in mind. If you are running it online on any of the sites they are probably using older versions, more stable versions of CUDA so that might be fine for you. So depending on which CUDA version and which drivers you are running, you need to do some small changes here. And I want to install more dependencies here, of course, and these also contains the transformers here, and I don't want this old version. So I will go into the requirements uh, file and re remove the version there or else it will not install. So now I can run pip install the requirements and it will install the rest of the packages that are missing in my environment here. So now we have installed Stable Diffusion and you can run images now. But I ran it and it will run only on the CPU and I have a pretty beefy CPU but it takes 93 hours to run one image which is a little bit too long. So <laughs> let's uh, check which uh, CUDA version I have here. I have 12.0 in this environment for some reason. I have 12.3 installed, but in order to enable this, we first need to run conda install, NVIDIA label CUDA 12.0 and the CUDA NCC. So that will download the compiler for 12.0 and install that. And then I need to install the uh, C GCC version for this as well with the CUDA Forge. So let's do that. 
everything like this is explained on their webpage and the Stable Diffusion webpage. I don't think that they have this dash Y uh, here, so you had to uh, answer a bunch of questions each time. And last but not least, we need to install the uh, G++ libraries as well. Uh, so we have all the compilers available to install something called Xforged or Xformers from uh, Facebook. And this Xformers library from Facebook could be installed by using this pip install Xformers uh, with the index URL of PyTorch uh, CUDA 1. Uh, 12.1. 12.0 doesn't exist. So we need to install a little bit newer version 12.1. I think they have one for 11.3 as well. So we will install that. That means that our PyTorch and our PyVision will no longer be the right version. Uh, so it will complain about that when this is installed. So now we see here that PyTorch isn't the right version. So I will run the same command again, but I will replace the Xformers to PyTorch instead. So the same, um, same repository, but just download Torch. And Torch Vision will be wrong as well after Torch has been installed. So our Torch Vision is not correct. So let's update that as well. And we have the latest version of Torch Vision there for that, that repository. So now let's get we get the stable diffusion um, v2 drivers here and downloading this uh, you need to find that link so on their page you have a link to this page where you have stable diffusion 2.1 but in here you need this one uh, 2.1 um, it's 768 emma pruned uh, ckpt but download, taking the link here is not correct because it's an LFS. So if you click on it, you get to this page and here it says that this is a Git LFS. It's too big to display, but you can download it. Take that download link, copy that link and go over here, paste it in with a VGET and you can download that. And it's about, I believe a couple of gigabytes, like five gigabytes or so. So it takes a little while to download. Uh, so now we have everything installed, we have the dependencies, we have the uh, particular model that we want to run and everything is good and dandy except for some of the dependencies can't be found <laughs> when you're running the script. So I have to modify the script a bit as well. So if we go into this scripts txt to image python and in here we have this LDM package here and it can't be found if I don't add two lines. So I will add the line import sys and then to the path I will add the uh, current directory, this stable diffusion directory. So it will actually find the other uh, dependencies here. Uh, for some reason I need to add that in order to get the, these packages as well. So when we have added that to the script I can run this huge Python uh, parameter here. So we have Python, we have the script we want to run. Then we have the prompt, in this case, a professional po photograph of an astronaut riding a horse. That's their, exp their, their example. Uh, we will say that we want to have this particular checkpoint. So the checkpoint that we downloaded. We will have the config file that is available in config, stable diffusion, v2 inference, dash v, YAML. And in my case, I needed to lower the resolution a bit. So the resolution is actually uh, 768 times 768. And if you have a better graphics card with more memory than me, I have only 12 gigabytes of uh, video memory. So I needed to uh, move it down a little bit in order to actually fit in my device. But if you have a great graphics card, uh, 4090 for instance, you should be able to just run it as is with the 768 resolution instead. And then we also need to add device CUDA down here. So when I start running this, 
it will use my graphics memory or, and my graphics card. So I'm not sure if that will work with the <laughs> recording as well, but let's see. It should be pretty fast when it actually starts running. So it will be build up some, uh, some attentions here, some blocks, works with a particular shape and so on. And the, I think the model is running something called a D DDIM. So this is the actual sampler for the image. It runs 50 samples per image. And there we see it, it ran out of graphic space. So it couldn't actually create the image. And we are back and we see here that it's completed. I had to close down my recording software in order to run it at all. Uh, but if we go into this directory here, outputs, uh, samples, and then we see here that we have a grid of all the pictures it created. So this is an astronaut ri uh, riding a horse, <laughs> which is, yeah, there is a couple of interesting images here but it's pretty much the same images that I have gotten every time. So it's uh, ex uh, extremely consistent in the creation of these images, no randomization. Uh, it's not that great, I would say. Um, and you can also, if we close this image, we can also go into samples here and see each image as is uh, in the full resolution. So this was the um, model running with running this mo stable diffusion model locally with version two. I know that version three is in beta now, so it might come to uh, Hugging Face soon, so we can actually try that out as well. But currently only version 2.1 is available to run and there is only co code for 2.1 as well. But this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you uh, haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.